So I guess I was wrong about this when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the NFL is trying one of the best players in the league, and we got a plenty more stuff to talk about with our favorite team. Before we do, make sure you leave a like on the video, click the thumbs up button, and subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single thing. Now, Lamar Jackson, he, of course, missed the first three days of training camp. Then on that fourth day, he was back. And it was like, all right, Lamar's back, but he did not practice in full. So it was like, oh, okay, well, he's back, but he ain't all the way back yet. But I figured, all right, if he didn't practice in full, that's cool. It'll be more of a ramp-up process. It'll be something where he continues to do more and more work every single day. But get this. After the fourth day of training camp, the Baltimore Ravens, they had a break. They didn't have no practice yesterday. So it's like, okay, Lamar Jackson, he practiced only for an hour the first, for the first time on the fourth day, but then he had a break. So they had a day off. So it was like, all right, cool. Lamar's good. He got an extra time of rest. So now uh, on their fifth day of training camp, which was today, he would, of course, be out there, right? Well, wrong. Wrong. Uh, I, I felt like and really thought that he would be getting better uh, uh, every day since he got back. But apparently, that's not the case. The Baltimore Ravens, they started training camp today by issuing this statement. It said, QB Lamar Jackson remains sidelined with an illness and will not practice today. He continues to undergo further evaluation and receive care from our medical team. Jacina Anderson, a couple of days ago, we, we talked about how she kind of worried me a little bit with Lamar Jackson's whole sickness on the very first day because when she talked about it, she made it sound a lot worse than the normal stomach virus or whatnot uh, because, just because of her strong words. But listen to what she said today. She said, also... I want to say kudos to the Baltimore Ravens for continuing to have Lamar Jackson go through additional medical evaluations to assess the root of their quarterback's illness. Jackson has the heart of a lion and clearly wants to be out there with all his team. In general, in the population overall, it's always smart practice to rule out anything that could potentially be concerning or chronic, particularly if missing practice due to illness becomes a pattern in any identifiable manner. Lamar is far too valuable to the overall success of the team to miss any time wherever Print, uh, preventable, excuse me. So, Josina Anderson let it be known, like, it's a good thing that the Baltimore Ravens are taking these extra precautions, being extra careful with whatever it is that Lamar Jackson was going through, uh, or is going through, excuse me. So, hopefully... It can get cleared up, but again, the timing of it. We, of course, don't want him to be sick, don't want him to be feeling whatever it is that he's feeling, whatever it is that he's dealing with, but the timing of it is not good, but it's better than it, that it's happening now than it's happening during the season, especially with whatever the severity of it is. First and foremost, we, of course, want Lamar Jackson to get better just as a person, as a human being. And then second, uh, for the football team, for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and, of course, he, I mean, we know he wants that, too. He, you know he want to be out there with his boys. Like, we already know how Lamar Jackson is when it comes to that. He is the ultimate competitor. Um, and, and like she said, like, you, you had to really be fighting him to, to keep him off the field. So, you know, this thing is super serious. But hopefully... Again, whatever it is, it does not linger on for too much longer. Now, I know as Ravens fans, we used to our team getting just tried, disrespected, all of that stuff. But NFL, like, really? Like, what is this? Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton has been regarded by a lot, maybe not everybody, as if not the best safety in the league, then the second best safety in in the league I honestly thought there should have been more talks surrounding Kyle Hamilton as a defensive player of the year last year but another conversation for another day NFL of course they did their top 100 list and you know the top 100 list it is subjective and whatnot but Kyle Hamilton they had him at number 43 overall at the 43rd best player in the NFL <laughs> like mm, that don't sit right with me that are, like, I, I don't really care too much about the NFL Top 100. I used to be super into it back in the day, but now not so much. But when I saw this, like, even they even listed the stats. He had three sacks, 10 tackles for a loss, one forced fumble, four interceptions, one defensive touchdown. Those are beautiful numbers. Those, those are nice stats. But when you watch Kyle Hamilton play the game of football and you see his impact on the league, not just the Ravens, but his impact on the entire NFL. 
what he does and what he does so well. What he does so well at so many different positions on the defense. And you saying he's at number 43? I can't get with that. USA Today Sports. Again, more disrespect to all Baltimore Ravens. I don't know what Raven did to some of y'all. Maybe the, the writer, whoever wrote this, compiled this list. Maybe the Baltimore Ravens beat down his or her favorite. Because this got to be personal. It really does. This was the 2024 NFL record projection. So how they think each team is going to do. Let's just go straight to the AFC North. They said they feel like the Bengals will be in first place in the AFC North, and they'll be 11-6. and six. And They said in second place, tied for second place, they think it'll be the Browns and the Ravens, both at 10-7, and seven, and then the Steelers will be at 9-8. and eight. So continuing their streak of going over 500. But this is like, really? really? Like, w w what am I missing to where you feel like, and, and if somebody think the Bengals are going to win the division, Cool, but 10 and 7 for the Ravens. Now we know Ravens, they usually lose two or three games due to some silly stuff. And not to say that they can't lose more, not to say there can't be a team that comes in or a team that where they play playing against and that team is just better than them on that day because it happens. You got to give other teams credit. But set like seven games, set, I, my honest, I feel like that's a lot for the Baltimore Ravens to look, especially if they're healthy. If, obviously, if there was injuries, oh, but if they held seven games, I just, I don't see that at all, man. I mm, I see, I could see 11 and six, really 12 and five. I feel like 12 and five for the ball, a healthy Baltimore Ravens, I feel like 12 and five is a low, honestly. And that's just, that's my honest opinion. I feel like 12 and five is the lowest that their record should be. If the Baltimore Ravens are healthy, seriously, they are a team that, that again with when they're healthy, they get it done. We we've seen the same football to obviously different players and whatnot, but we've seen it when Lamar Jackson was healthy, and so many players on the team were dropping like flies. So many players on the team were not healthy; they were getting hurt. Twenty twenty one, they were sitting at first place. So why like? Yeah, yeah, this 10 and 7 thing, yeah, that, that, that's making me feel like Lamar Jackson right now. I feel kind of sick to my stomach. Now, this is how you know football is really back and them pads are officially on because we got our first little mini fight at the Baltimore Ravens training camp. The report from Jeff Zrebick, he said the first minor altercation of training camp as Justice Hill and Trenton Simpson got into it. Uh, it said after Hill picked up Simpson on a blitz, so hey, I was talking to my guy the other day. He talking about how with Justice Hill, he been improving on them uh, on his pass protection and his pass blocking. So Justice Hill looked like he's still improving on it because Trent Simpson might got a little upset. But anyway, it said Ronnie Stanley quickly got into the, the middle of the, those two and broke it up. So look at Ronnie Stanley. Like, hey, look, yo, hey, y'all boys, we, we all on the same team. I get it. Tempers are flying and whatnot. Everybody hot right now. The weather is literally hot right now. So it's making adding more fuel to y'all fire. But look. We're good, just chill out. But I, I, I like it. I, I like it. I, I, I like it when it gets chippy. Because when you see the videos, I ain't condoning fighting or nothing like that. But it, these dudes are competing for jobs. Like, this is the best of the best in the world. In the world. And a lot of people's jobs ain't safe. Trent Simpson's job, safe. Justice Hill's job, safe. But still, they want to get playing time. They want to show like, hey, I belong here because, you know, NFL stands for not for long. So with both of those guys, they, they just competing. They competing. And tempers fly. Like training camp fights is nothing new. It's been happening for the longest. It will continue to happen for the longest. So this just shows that the Baltimore Ravens, them pads is on officially, and they out there hitting them. So, yeah, it's real. Now, a little minor injury update uh, came about Kyle Vinoy. Uh, Jeff Zerbeck said that Harbaugh said v Kyle Vinoy has some minor neck soreness, which is why he did not practice today. So, again, it sounds like he's a little, he a little old, just a little bit older. And maybe he was like, maybe he was playing a Nintendo Switch or something like that, and he had his neck turned down. I don't know what it was, but I'm sure he'll be straight in a day or two, and he'll be right back out there with the rest of the guys. So this is something I really wouldn't worry about. It does not sound like a long-term thing or not. It's just when you, when you get back out there, 
Especially if, 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 if it's been a little while, you get back out there and training and working out, or you out there on the football field. It's different, man. It's the, especially when you get a little tiny bit up there in age. Like, he ain't no old man or nothing like that, of course. But when you start to get a little older, like stuff, it, it, it don't work the same like it used to, man. So with Kyle Vanoa, I, I get it. I get it. But we, we, we'll see you out there in a day or two. Now, something that we've been hearing a lot about this training camp has been the Baltimore Ravens trying some players out out at different positions one of the most notable ones has been Malik Cunningham him making the transition from quarterback to wide receiver but there's been another one that's sort of kind of been going under the radar even though like you really can't miss this guy on, on, the, Ra on the Ravens team because he just he's a giant man and not even talking about Derrick Henry but Daniel Falele Daniel Falele is somebody that came to the Baltimore Ravens as a fourth round pick a couple of years ago and he was labeled as a project where he had this massive size as a huge guy um, but he didn't quite wasn't quite NFL ready and he was considered a project for the Baltimore Ravens a developmental type of tackle for the Baltimore Ravens and of course last year he got his most extensive uh, work throughout his career thus far because he was spelling Morgan Moses a lot last season. Uh, of course, Ronnie Stanley, uh, he got spelled by Pat McCurry, and then Morgan Moses got spelled by Daniel Filele. But the Baltimore Ravens, it's expected, it ain't set in stone yet, but it's expected that Roger Rosengarden ends up being their starting right tackle. It could be subject to change, but it's looking like it's going to be him. But at the guard positions, that's where we still have question marks. We don't know who it's going to be yet. Left tackle is going to be Ronnie Stanley. Center is going to be Tyler Linderbaum. And right tackle is expected to be Rosengarten, but it's not set in stone. But the guard spots are up for grabs. Daniel Falele, he's been working at guard. And that could be something serious. If you could get, if they could make that happen and make that work with Daniel Falele at guard, like that giant at guard. Ravens just, the Ravens gonna run over everybody. I mean, they, they run over everybody like every single season. Well, not in the playoffs because that's when they decide they just don't want to do it. But regular season, they literally run through and over everybody. So if you got Daniel Filele, if, if he can really get moving, oh my goodness, that's like, that won't even be fair.